This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but more on that later. After the purchase of numerous acres of land for its wind farm project, Superior Power owns a significant amount of land that is primed for agricultural uses, but little else. Being in the room where it happened, Mayor Kikwam is keenly aware of Superior Power's predicament and tips off tribal leaders that they may be able to purchase some land from the utility at a discount, which would be perfect for the expansion of Ojibwe Organics. The tribal leaders, having been interested in this expansion for quite some time, approached Superior Power with an offer to purchase the entire bluff from the company while offering 100-year leases for the land surrounding the wind turbines. Superior Power jumps at the offer, and Ojibwe Organics gets to work planning and constructing what they believe will be the largest apple orchard in the upper Midwest when it's completed. Today, we're going to build this new orchard, and we're going to build a small town to support this industrial expansion. And if you like apples, hit the like button. Or if you prefer some other fruit, hit the like button for that. In either case, drop me a comment with your favorite fruit as an emoji. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Nicolay Bay. And we've got a good one today. We are going to do some really interesting things building what I think is going to be the largest apple orchard that I've ever built in the game. But before we get to that, I feel like we've got to address a couple of things. First of all, Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle. I will never get that wrong again. I promise you that. <laughs> that was the first thing. And the second thing is we had two comments about the wind farms. And these are by professionals that work in the industry, or at least worked in the industry. Trevor K was a former wind tech and Rich James designed wind farms. And the two comments that they made, I thought were really important. The first one is that I was really too focused on all the slopes out here. They use all-terrain vehicles and it doesn't matter. So fair enough. And the second one is that I didn't focus on turnarounds at all. And this embarrasses me because whenever I'm looking at and reviewing a building, this is something I would think about. I would think about can a fire truck turn around? Why would it be any different here? These are large vehicles that are coming up and accessing these wind farms. So obviously we would need to have a cul-de-sac bulb or something at the end so that a large vehicle could turn around. A hammerhead would work as well so you could pull in back out, but something is necessary. So I'm going to fix that right now. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to go into the network multi-tool. We're going to add a crossing and then we'll go back into the network multi-tool, select the end, go to more options and hit 150%. And that gives us a pretty decent bulb there. And if we wanted it to be bigger, we could grab that node and slide it closer. There we go, more bulbous. Or we could simply go through and make this even larger, say 200. There we go, maybe we'll do 200, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna take care of the rest of these and we'll be right back. Okay, and we've got these all set up and it looks pretty darn good. So I really appreciate that feedback. That was a good one. Now we are going to prep our site for our new orchard. Now I'm going to have to ask you to trust the process here. Are you starting to trust the process? Oh no. So first of all, I want to let you know that I've added in Industries Rebalanced. I tried doing what I'm about to do without it and it was a disaster. What Industries Rebalanced does is reduce the number of vehicles at each farm and the number of employees and makes it a lot more realistic and reasonable. So you can actually have a large sprawling orchard without having thousands of trucks <laughs> generating from those orchards. So our first issue is going to be our resources. So if we take a look, we've got forestry here. So we're going to unlock our forestry industry and I want to get rid of all these trees. And now that those are gone, we need to add in our fertile land. So it's like we're, we're going across this. We're just going to fertilize it from the air. That's that's what we'll say we're doing. And then I'll relock this. And now if we didn't do this, what would happen is we'd, we'd be in a situation where none of our fields are productive. So that would be a problem. And then the other thing I know that I want to do up front is extend our industry over here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll sever this. Now, this is the same industry area, but it's in two halves. So it, uh, it's going to work well for us. All right. So now that we have this, I know one thing right off the bat that's going to bug me. So we're going to fix it right away. 
we can't place anything on this highway. So we need to have a frontage road of sorts for anything that we're going to place here. So I know that I want large fruit fields. The reason for that is though they are four times the size of the small fields, they only have double the number of employees. Now it's wrong. The numbers you're seeing here because I have industry rebalanced, but it's three employees for, for the small field and six for the large. So the way that we're going to figure out how far back our road needs to go is we're going to place these and then I'm just going to line these up. So we'll take two of these, line them up back to back like that. And then I want to go into the unified UI. We'll go into the parallel road tool and I'm going to add this here. So now we have a pretty good setup and what we're going to do is just grab this, turn our contours on and find a way to meet up with this. Now it's going to be a challenge actually to meet up right here without a pretty extreme slope. So I think we're going to come in a little bit further down. So this will serve two purposes. First, we get that connection. It's not too steep. We could test that out here. There we go. 5%. Secondly, it, this will not become a cut through. That is a significant concern of mine. I want this to be a local road. Even at that, we're going to relocate this dirt road so that we're coming in at a four corner junction and not having two intersections side by side. There we go. That is an improvement. Now we are going to basically start to spam some stuff. So we want to get to level five right now. We're at level two. We know that we need 200 employees just to get to the next level. Let's go ahead and place, I don't know, 30 of these. I'm gonna get some water pipes under here. I just want to see where this gets me to. This wasn't 30, but it's a lot. And where we're at is each one of these is three employees. The barn is actually six. The silo is six as well. And then I also added in a couple of workers barracks, 40 employees each at these. So these are going to generate a lot of trips. And that is exactly what I want. Or not lots of trips. I just want lots of employees. <laughs> I want to, I want to get to the next level. There we go. So we have the potential for 311 workers. Now I'm going to spread this out all the way along this road and maybe up here. And then we're going to move on to creating our little city. I think that's going to be the next important thing to think about. Oh, there we go. Level three. We need 400 workers. We have 691 potential. Now, if we were going to be opening this new orchard, one thing that we might want to think about, especially as it looks like this, is advertising it to people, making people aware of its existence and show the vision of what this thing could be. And you could do that with today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Sometimes when you're starting something new, you want to share your vision for what it could become, not what it is today. And that's where today's video sponsor, Squarespace, comes in. With its powerful and beautiful web platform, it's perfect for making websites of any kind. With Squarespace, you can build a website that shows the whole world what you've been planning. And Squarespace makes it easy to build hype around your idea by encouraging engagement with its fully integrated comment system, as well as powerful blogging tools to create, share, and schedule posts. And once you've built a community, you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy-to-use platform. If all of this sounds good to you, head to squarespace.com slash cityplatterplays to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So I'm going to slow this down and we are going to build a small town right here. And you might wonder why right here contours. This is a good location. This is a location that is fairly flat, a little bit of a ridge here, but that at height gives us views of the water. Not a bad thing. So we're going to start a little community here. This is going to be a community that the tribe helps found specifically to support its industry. So it will be very utilitarian. The way that it is designed is going to be on a grid. It's going to be a small, tight grid. And, you know, there's two ways to look at it. You could think to yourself, boy, a small grid. That means that there are tons of conflict points. That means that it is dangerous. And that would be a valid, rational engineering way of looking at it. Uh, the planner, though, in me is going to say, well, 
actually, <laughs> the more intersections there are, the more walkable it is. So as a result, we are going to have very a very tight grid, understanding that most of the people who live here probably are gonna be walking places. Now I'm turning off my road guidelines because they were throwing off my perfect grid. The other thing throwing off my perfect grid is anarchy, so we'll turn that off as well. Now over here, we've got a lot of trees. I think I'm gonna remove the trees for now. We'll add them back later on. But they're making it difficult for me to see the contours. I kind of think maybe I should have a tree toggle. I wonder if that's an option that I can have with this. Uh, probably is. Anyway, what we're gonna do is try to work with our terrain a little bit here. So things get a little bit wonky and that's good. It means that we can have a little bit of variation in our grid. So we're gonna send this up and try to mirror this cliffside. So we have some nice cliffside homes. Actually, this has zoning on, which is making it difficult for me to figure out exactly what's going on. I'm going to turn anarchy on and disable zoning on this road. We don't need it here, and it's confusing. It's more lines. There we go. So that shows me that I didn't go quite far enough back with this. Okay, so now I have the basic layout of this community. We've got what will be a nice little main street. We'll have some in industry in this area, kind of right near this entryway into the community. And right now it's a big cul-de-sac, so we need to find another way out of here. And what I think we're gonna do is wind our way up here and have an exit over here that maybe is a little less apparent, but the locals like to use this one. Okay, now we need to start thinking about zoning and some of our city services. And the idea here is that this road right down the middle is going to be the main drag. We're going to have some of our industrial uses up here, quick access to the highway then, and we'll need to have some commercial uses buffering. So I want to get all of our city services right in the middle of town, and I think we're going to go with some of the European assets. They're a little bit nicer looking in my opinion. Well, maybe some of them. <laughs> They're also very large. With the 9x9 grid, you see that the fire station, the firehouse, actually takes up most of the grid, so we don't want that necessarily. I'm going to take this, and this is going to be the main artery in the community. This will be the a kind of a, a commercial arterial as well. So we are going to place this here and face this on the main road, which normally I try to avoid. We'll do the same thing with the police station. And then I want to make sure that we also have a post office. And now we also have our banks. So why don't we place a bank as well? Because we don't have a stock exchange. <laughs> so we're not going to place a bank. <laughs> okay, so the other thing that we're going to need is health care and some sort of death care. And for death care, I think we'll have a cemetery. And we'll place that kind of on the edge of town. And these can terraform. So I don't mind it going up the hill a little bit. Now, let's add in our commercial uses. And we better get some water pipes underneath the road, right where they belong, and then we'll get power here as well. And then for power, I'm wondering if I place a transformer just outside of the cemetery, if that gets us to jump. Certainly does, we are good to go. So we can get this thing moving again. Now, uh, one of the reasons you might've noticed this, I grabbed a little bit of this industry and pulled it down here is because we're gonna actually incorporate part of our industry in this community. So what we're gonna do is hop in here and throw in a flour mill. So to me, this would be a very suitable use in this location. We'll place that right here. And then along here, I'm going to run a road Control H this all down. I should have looked at the contours and leveled the pad first. I did not. And uh, we'll need to use our mods to improve things. Not a big deal. And now I'm going to level a pad right here as well. 
this is going to be for a factory. So I think that this is going to be very beneficial for us as well. We're not going to be able to do with anything with it up front, the bakery. And that's because we don't have any animal products, but we have the ability to add some and we are, you better bet that we're going to do something with it. So I was really hoping to have parking here. So I believe that we can make it work, but we're going to need to get creative with it. That's probably a better solution that'll look a little bit better in the long run. So we're going to also need to have some support buildings for this. So we know that at a minimum, we're going to have to have something for our crops, something for animal products, flour and pastries. So we're going to need some warehouses. Let's add a couple of warehouses here. And these are open air, which seems a little weird to me. So even though these are bigger and maybe a little unnecessary, we're going to go with a small warehouse and try to make it work. So this is the joy of a modded build, being able to move these around and get these to fit just as we want them to, because otherwise this is not happening. All right, now we also need our silo and we don't have a large one yet. That's what I would prefer to have, but we can have a small silo here, a couple of small ones. There we go. That'll be just fine. And now let's get our uses in place. And now I'm going to hope that we don't have too many noise issues over here. And maybe better than hoping, I'm just going to make sure that we aren't zoning too close to it. Although it's pretty unavoidable on this end. Now before all this fills in, let's give a nice park to the community. Now another, we're gonna we're gonna load up our cul-de-sacs, but I'm noticing something here that's concerning, and that is that this cul-de-sac is actually lower than every other place, which means that the basements would flood. So we don't want that to happen. We're gonna smooth this out. No ponding down there. It's still it's a bigger basin where the ponding would occur now, but it's not concentrated in that one location. And holy cow, we might need to cut back on the number of silos that we have. They are just loading right up and the amount of traffic that we're seeing coming right here is pretty intense and honestly pretty crazy. We're going to make it even worse because we're going to go through this and we're going to make this full of animal products. They're going to import it for now. No, 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 it's oh, no, it cannot be imported. So we will have to get our own processing and we'll have flour here and unique factory goods here. And all of our commercial has abandoned. <laughs> so that's exciting. We may need to actually take some of this away, which uh, I thought we could get away with it, but apparently it's just too much. Now for the cul-de-sac, we're going to need to place the, the buildings manually. What we'll do is go into our tags and we've got some tags that are pretty nice already. We'll just set these up and I'm going to place a couple of houses over here. Okay, made a couple of modifications, but you can see the general idea here now. And this is filling in. We are still just absolutely choked with traffic right here. We're going to need to do something about that down the line. But I do want to take a look and see where we're at here. We are at level four, and we do have the potential to reach level five. Now, first of all, let's look at our policies. We'll enable all of these. They'll make it a more attractive place to work. We need to get to 650 and that's not very much higher than our maximum number. Now, if we just start spamming more of these, we will just see a whole bunch more people work here. So as backwards as this sounds, I'm going to add in a bunch of these. These each have 45 workplaces. So these should absolutely jack the number of people up here. And we're going to be rebuilding this anyway. So I'm not going to get overly concerned about it at this point in time. I'm just gonna let this go for a minute to see if our if we reach our employee milestone. I think it's gonna be very close. Okay, I see that this is gonna be a very long and arduous process. And as much as I like counting to a hundred by ones, I'm gonna reserve that for when I'm spending time with my five-year-old, which I did the other day. She can count to a hundred by ones. It was awesome, truthfully. That said, I do not want to do it by myself. So I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna add in 
some residential zoning along here. Now this to me makes a ton of sense for a couple of very specific reasons. First of all, we know that Superior Power is trying to divest of all of their assets and this would be another way to do that. They own all of this land now they're going to plat it out and sell it for some residential uses, which are absolutely in demand. So we're going to follow the coast for the most part. And I'm disabling zoning. That was that's a mistake. <laughs> so we'll bring that back. Now back here, there's a natural place where we could get up. So we're going to come back here and make that connection and then try to line it up at a nice 90 right here. And now I'm going to make a couple of call to sacks. Now we're gonna have one here right along the coast. And then we're gonna have a number of them coming from the coast back to here. This will open up some additional land for development and we are prioritizing the coastal road, not the highway. Okay, and you might've seen that I made these exactly the opposite way that I made the previous call to sacks. And I, I've learned that if you make the bulb first, it's actually a little bit faster. So you can go through with the network multi-tool and just kind of click, 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 click through all of these and then use move it to move it around afterwards. So a little bit faster. Now along here with these, we zoned all of these in. It was a very tedious process. I am not sure that I want to do that this time. I might, I might place more of these. Ah, no, no, we're going to just do it. We're gonna do it, but we're gonna place our water pipes first and then we'll zone along here. Now, before we do this, I, I think the county would be very interested in getting some sort of public recreation use here along the coast, especially since we're privatizing basically all of it. So let's take a look at what we have available to us to make this a little bit more attractive to the general public. So I think a couple of fishing piers makes a ton of sense. I think fishing tours also makes a ton of sense. So what you see I'm doing, I'm just plopping these where it will allow me and I'm gonna add the roads afterwards. And then the pier restaurant too. This reminds me of a, uh, there's a, a state park that I really love, Lake Kaganza State Park. And there are a bunch of homes right along the lake. And right in the middle of it, there is a restaurant with a boat slip that all of the homes around there have access to. And that's kind of the way that I envision this. And I think that this is gonna be good enough. We'll add in a couple of bulbs here, and boy, we could basically call this episode cul-de-sac builder. Because <laughs> I don't know that we've ever built, built, built so many cul-de-sacs. But I'm here for it today, if you are. Okay, and now I just want to place the couple of homes that I know are going to be around the cul-de-sac bulbs and then we'll zone in everything else. So this will be a way that we can make this functionally what I want it to be. Okay, so now for the most part, I think we're in a good place here. The other thing I noticed though is we could use one more cul-de-sac over here. This is on a cliff. Okay, I like this. I think this turned out really well. Let's go ahead and zone in some of our homes. We'll go all the way around. We're gonna get, try to avoid these cul-de-sac bulbs where we can. Okay, now we'll add just a bit of landscaping. Okay, so we should come back to our farm and see where we're at here. And it looks like <laughs> we're seven workers away from reaching level five. So I'm gonna speed this up. I hope we get there in just a moment. I feel like it's toying with me at this point. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is just place one more field. Actually, I'll just go, I'll go big. All right, we finally made it. And that means it's time to get rid of our existing farm. So all of this is gonna go away and we're gonna start fresh. And it feels good to have an empty slate to work with. 
So what we're gonna do now is just try to fill all of these in with large fruit fields. And I think it's gonna look really good. Let's just check these out. You can see six workers, that's a really modest number. And then where we have some of these kind of odd gaps, that's where we are going to fill in some of our storage buildings because we're going to have to have them somewhere. Okay, for the most part, I've got all of my tree farms in. So what we're gonna do is place a couple of areas for storage at a few of our workers barracks in here and try to place them in ways that make sense. I also missed the greenhouse over here, so we'll take care of that as well. And I was just thinking about something. Maybe we will actually get rid of this and we don't need a lot of animal product to be able to produce our baked goods. But it would be nice to have some. So what I'm going to do is just pop on through here and see if there's any that will work nicely in here. And I have one in mind. So this cattle shed almost just lo it just looks like a, a regular farm building. Doesn't look at all out of place. So I think we'll place this one here with a barn next to it. If I were playing a vanilla game right now. I wouldn't place these here because this road right here is going to act as a collector and I added some uses that are going to load a ton of vehicles onto that collector. So for the rest of these, I will try to place the barns kind of off to the side and a grain cellar doesn't make a ton of sense, but we'll just go with it. In fact, it probably makes more sense to put this where we have our grain silo. Okay, so now we've got these a little ways off the beaten path. And I think that that makes good sense. And you might wonder, now what? We just have all these weird gaps. It's going to be fairly easy to figure this part out. What we're going to do is just clear all of these settings. Actually, we'll go to trees. We'll type in apple. And now we're going to use our line tool. And I just want to make sure we're going to test one out. We'll come here and see how the spacing is. And honestly, it looks almost perfect. I think we could get these to be a little bit tighter. So we'll pop through here. And let's adjust our spacing. Let's make it six. Looks just about right. So now we've got the tedious work. There are a couple of ways that we could approach this. I could try to make a template and just kind of spam the template in there. I think it's going to take more work to create the template than it will be just to fill this in. So I'm just going to fill this in myself. I'll start in small areas and work my way around. Try to leave ample room around the barns and we'll add in some fencing around there at the end. And I, I'm regretting that I didn't add in some paths through here. So we're going to add some walking paths to be able to get from one field to another. Whew. I think I got it all. <laughs> that was That was a lot of work. Uh, I might try to wrap it around here and then we'll call it a day. But one of the reasons I didn't touch this area is I think we need a pedestrian connection up. I talked a big game about how we made this tight grid so people could walk and now there's no way to walk up there. So we are going to use our nature reserve paths. These will allow us to grade. So that's one of the reasons that I left this cul-de-sac bulb empty is I thought it might be nice to, to meander a path up here. So. That is precisely what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go into our network multi tool and attempt to level this out. I think in an ideal world, I'd have the turns uh, be a little flatter. The world isn't ideal. So we'll accept our 9% grade, which is honestly pretty darn good. Okay, so we're pretty good there. I think that at this point, I want to finish off the last couple of trees that we have. So I do want to check a couple of things. First of all, how's our industry doing? We're making a nice little profit there. We have about 200 less workers than we had before, and we couldn't even reach level five number of workers. And you know what? 
that's totally fine. We don't need to max out like that. Now what I want to do is fill in some of these areas and I've got to be really careful because I do not want to overwrite what I've already done. I'm going to turn anarchy off now and I do want to point out one thing. I've had forestry lock on the entire time. This is key because I added all these trees. Every green spot is a tree that I've added that is not impacting us. So this is absolutely critical. So if you're going to do what I just did, you have to have this mod. You have to be able to lock your forestry. Otherwise, it'll break your farms as you're doing this and you won't be able to recover from it. So that's the other important thing to consider. So this is looking awesome. Let's get this filled in. Okay, along here, I want to have a ton of landscaping. This is going to be a sound barrier. So it's really important that this is maintained and it'll make a nice uh, bit of a visual separation as well. This is a way to not have a sound wall, which is they're difficult to get. I have mentioned this before, but at least my local Department of Transportation, if you want to get a sound wall, it's like pulling teeth. They are expensive. They are difficult to maintain. And uh, I think that from their perspective, people still complain after they're installed. So it, it, no one likes living next to a highway. It's one of those things where, you know, uh, maybe berming is just as good, maybe better in some cases. Uh, it just doesn't feel as good, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now I'm going to play with fire. I talked about how this looks like a retention pond to me. Let's see if we can't make it one. This is really stupid. I shouldn't do this. <laughs> There we go. I like that. I think it looks nice. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. Not necessary at all, but we're we're not necessarily going to do things that are always necessary. And then the last place that I want to focus on is going to be just out back here. We're going to add in some trees to make it appear that they carved this orchard into an existing forest. I love the look of it. Okay, I'm feeling really good about this. I think that the traffic is finally normalized. My guess is all of these barns are just completely filled up now. Yeah, that was the case. Uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, we could certainly add more storage, but it's it's also fine having full barns. I'm not overly concerned. It just means that we're not making as much money as we could, but we're making plenty of money. So it's not as if the industry is doing poorly. Looking at our flour mill, we're doing well there. Looking at our bakery, we're doing well there. We could even crank this to the top if we really wanted to, to try to extract even more value from this industry. I don't know that it's worth it though. Uh, it's gonna drive more traffic to this town and it's a sleepy little town. Now, we were having lots of problems with our silos before. I wanna do one thing and that is just take a look at these. Three workers, six trucks for each one of these. And then we've got this one right here, seven trucks. So if I were to replace this with one of these large silos, this is 11 trucks. This one is, this one's nine. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're generating more trips here than we have to. And I kind of like the aesthetic of the grain silo there. Kind of feels like something you might see in a town this size. So obviously a lot more detailing that we could do here but I am not overly concerned. My bigger concern is that we've got some of these buildings that look a little bit crazy and we don't want a bunch of two story buildings. So we're just going to downgrade these and set the level. In fact, here's an easier way. We don't want to do this building by building. Let's name our little community and then we will force all of the commercial buildings to remain at level one. So I'm going to carve out a little area right here out of the town of Ashwabanan. We're going to make this the village of golden. And we're going to name it the Village of Golden after the apple. So it makes sense to me. So the for workplaces, maximum level will be one. And we are going to force downgrade. And for homes, they can be whatever they want. But I just want to make sure that we don't have a bunch of tall buildings through here. Doesn't make a ton of sense to me. And now we have what looks like corner shops, laundry mats, uh, uh, a big bite. This is what I would totally expect to see in a town this size. So I think this is looking very good. I think it's about time that we, well, I want to look at one thing. Traffic flow. Okay. It's not broken through here. It's ensured that this hasn't broken. 
We have other traffic problems to contend with, but I am happy to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. Okay, and as night approaches, it's clear to see that there's one thing that we might want to change. The light on here is absolutely crazy, in my opinion. That said, I'm going to change one, and I'm going to leave it to you guys. I want to know if I should get rid of these floodlights or not. So if I were to accept this, this is what it looks like. So let me know in the comments, lights or no lights. And let's look at what this looks like really late at night then. Decidedly more rural, I'd say, I'd say. But that said, they were a feature of the landscape before. Something that you could see from around the community. Something that meant a lot to this area. Whoa. <laughs> and now we are filling this up and that is why we are getting traffic. <laughs> well, I think that this is where we uh, <laughs> let them keep doing their thing. And uh, we're going to be just fine. We're going to have a brief traffic jam because obviously... Everyone needs to fill up this grain silo. That is absolutely mandatory. Uh, we're going to leave it here, though. <laughs> and I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. <laughs> oh, jeez. We're going to have to have a stream just for the bridge. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. And we will pretend that that didn't happen. Take care. Bye-bye.